Okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for joining us online and on site. So, uh, my name is Alina Ustinova. I am representing the Center for Global IT Cooperation. We're the coordinators for Youth Russian IGF. Thank you. And um, so we also have uh, a project uh, which is called Youth Digital Om Ombudsperson. We actually presented it in 2021 in the I IIJF where it first started. So, and the idea of this networking session is to uh, tell about projects that involve like enlightenment of youth and of many people around the world about IT, about tech, about what initiatives uh, we have from around the, the globe and maybe someone can find uh, people who they can work with uh, in the future. Uh, so basically this is it. Uh, I hope that uh, someone maybe uh, will ask us uh, online audience some questions or maybe propose some kind of a project because it's all about networking. So we're gonna start with my colleague here, uh, Pavel Poznikov, will tell us about the project of the Coordination Center for uh, tld.ru.rf. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, as it was previously mentioned, I am from the Coordination Center for Russian top level domains, .ru and .rf. Nice to see you again. Well, uh, let's start maybe, maybe with my presentation. Yeah, see it. Well, and uh, I'll tell you about uh, projects of the Coordination Center. We'll start with the first one. And um, so the center pays uh, great attention to the projects aimed at increasing the level of knowledge and uh, digital literacy among young people. Uh, the first one uh, project is uh, Summer School on Internet Governance, as you can see on this slide. The school uh, already has its own history for the last four years. Uh, this time the uh, school had almost 300 submissions to participate in and uh, about uh, 40 of them uh, finished the course. Uh, we had so wide range of ages, of uh, <coughs> countries, backgrounds. As usual, we uh, have a strong women lobby there. And uh, the project school uh, traditionally uh, last uh, for two months. Next one, the use council of the center. As you can see, uh, the main goals uh, is to give participants a space to implement uh, their own ideas, projects, and uh, also to give them a special experience on uh, conducting uh, events concerning uh, internet governance idea. So next one, the Digital Reality Club. Uh, we, with my colleagues, and I mean uh, members of the um, Youth Council, alumni of the um, Internet Governance School, uh, so we organize sessions and discuss uh, with experts uh, during the club. What is topics of uh, Internet Governance? The last one session, for example, we discussed uh, this current event, the IGF in Kyoto. Uh, traditionally, we have a special course uh, on the eve of the Russian Internet Governance Forum. You can uh, shoot it with your phone. Uh, all of you can see the QR code on the screen. Uh, so. Uh, the uh, special course uh, aimed at engaging the young people in the topic of internet governance. And the last one, but not the least. Uh, traditionally, we have, um, uh, after the forum, a special youth section to formulate a call, uh, you know, a message uh, from the younger ge generation concerning the current uh, IG issues. So I'm done. If you have any question, uh, you can ask me. Yeah, thank you, Alina. Thank you, Pavel. Uh, so I think that we will have a Q&A in the end of our session. So if you want to write something in the chat, please do. 
uh, we will answer, or um, probably you just we give the word to you. So, we will stay in the same region, Eastern Europe, and now I, I want to give a word to Marco, who will speak about his involvement. Maybe. Um, so, next slides, please. Thank you for the introduction. Hello, everyone. I am Marco Pawlowski. Oh, wait, I have a slide. Uh, okay. I'm Marco Pawlowski, coming from uh, Macedonia. I am uh, currently, from this year, coordinator of the Internet Governance Forum, the national one for North, uh, for North Macedonia. And uh, how I'm here, I'm here as a representative of the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance. Uh, what started as an idea and initiative many years ago, it's still now running and it's uh, uh, one, how can I say, coalition or group of youth uh, people who are involved in the intern governance uh, world. So the whole body or the coalition is everyone who is under 35 years old can join the coalition. We have a mailing list, we have a working groups where we uh, are representative. I mean, the, the steering committee each year is selected, which one year of term. Uh, representing the, the five regions of uh, UN uh, regions, how it's uh, propagated. Here on the slide are for this year uh, steering committee, uh, me from Eastern Europe, we have uh, Joao from Western Europe, uh, Latin America we have Nicolas, Asia Pacific, Fio, and African we have Mauritia. So what actually we do? Um, the whole idea is to uh, group the youth who are interested in intergovernance topics to discuss, to merge together, as uh, Alina mentioned, to network and maybe collaborate on some projects. But we have also some, um, how can I say, regular activities that we are doing uh, each year. Uh, I, few, uh, I put here a few on the slide. The first one is, uh, together with Inter Society, we are doing the Youth Ambassador Mentorship. We are o opening a call for mentors. We select the mentors, and some of us are part of the uh, guidebook and uh, whole coordination with every every mentor there. Uh, we are also registered in the IGF Dynamic Coalition that uh, represents each year at the IGF. We have some sessions on the Dynamic Coalition uh, forum. Uh, during the year, we organize uh, webinars and workshops uh, on different topics that are involved in the youth, and we tend to the, the speakers to be the youth people to share about their work, what they are doing, so we learn more about them. Uh, we have a bi-weekly newsletter of opportunities that we are sharing about uh, youth opportunities like fellowships, open jobs, uh, stuff that youth can be uh, signing or joining. Um, in the last three years we are organizing when IGF is opening the calls for submission for the like this forum, we are preparing and collecting the youth to together to put the submission. Because if you are new to IGF, or maybe you seen on the website and new in this uh, world, how can I say, of intern governance, uh, there is a procedure that you need to follow uh, if you want to propose a uh, proposal or submission. So we are organizing the youths on the topics, on the different uh, segments, and collecting uh, together to help and write the proposals and apply them to, uh, so they can be selected for the IGF. In this year, uh, we had, I think, around 100-something proposals together with the Internet Society Youth Standing Group, and about 10% of them were selected. That's around 15 sessions, I think, here on the... Uh, Internet Governance Forum at Japan. Writing posts, uh, uh, usually about experiences. Uh, I had a blog post about my experience in the RightCon on the, in Costa Rica, a uh, few about the Dynamic Coalition meetings and something like that. And as I mentioned, we have active uh, mailing lists. Uh, I, I want just to mention here that there is a lot of more opportunities that are not just uh, Youth Coalition Internet Governance and Internet Society Youth Standing Group, which I think uh, the next will be the presentation. Uh, on the site of Youth Coalition Internet Governance, which uh, I can share later, there is uh, how to get involved, about the youth, how can they get involved, and there are plenty of uh, opportunities listed by region, by uh, organizations like Internet Society, ICANN, um, and many more. So yes, I will keep it short. If there are any questions, we can discuss more in the Q&A session. And yeah, that's all. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. So the next one to present uh, a project will be going to uh, Asia, India. So Shraddha, please, uh, she will join us online. So uh, please start. I will, uh, please, next slides. And I uh, just tell me what to click because uh, do you hear us? 
Hello. Yes, thanks, Irina. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you, but it's a, a little bit, uh, you know, maybe you can be a little louder. Yes, yes, I can be a little louder. Is this better now? Okay, thank you. So, just okay. on, where, uh, thank you next so slide where you want to take me. Yes, I will, I will. Thank you so much for sharing the slides. Um, hello, everybody. Very good morning uh, in Japan. Where are you joining? And everybody online, a very good morning to you too. So uh, my session, is, uh, my presentation is going to center around two main topics. And the two main topics are the two organizations that I'm currently a part of. That is the International Telecommunication Union's Generation Connect Group and the Youth Standing Group, the Youth Standing Group for which I'm a board member. So uh, can we go to the next slide, please? Next slide. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, yes, please. Okay. This one? So, okay. <laughs> yes, please. This one? <laughs> yes, this one. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> thank you. Um, so the International Telecommunication Union's Generation Connect group is a group of uh, young members selected from all the regions across the globe. So I'm a part of the Asia Pacific section of the group. And we have currently uh, a few representatives who are on site in Japan who are representing the International Telecommunication Union in Japan for um, to, to ensure that youth members and youth forces are heard at the highest level of policy making and decision making on the internet and in ICT. But the main presentation idea or the topic that I want to center around here today is the idea of youth standing group and the role of youth standing group of internet society, which formed as a part of the ISOC special interest groups and then later changed into youth standing group about what we do, how we do, and how we can enlighten youth to get involved in more internet governance activities. Can we go to the next slide, please? Yes, thank you so much. Um, so the Youth Standing Group started out as Youth Observatory and became Youth SIG, and now it's currently the Youth Standing Group. It's made by the young people for young people. The idea is to ensure that all young people get a voice on the internet and their opinions and their voices are voiced out and they, they're heard at the highest level of policy making. So it started in 2015 and was integrated in ISOC in 2016 as a special interest group. And in 2022, we received a permanent status, a permanent status as a standing group or this uh, 2022 SG. And the current board of directors, you can see them on the screen for 2022 to 2024 terms are below. And if you will notice something carefully, you will notice that in the presentation Marco gave just before me, uh, the Youth Coalition of Internet Governance and Youth Standing Group work very closely together, so much so that one of the board of directors of the Youth Standing Group and Youth Coalition of Internet Governance, Mauritia, who is from Africa, are the are, yeah she's a member of both of the groups so this is something that we understand from the idea of collaboration and the idea of involving youth members about how we can take this forward can we go to the next slide please thank you yes um, so the question that comes up is youth engagement across the globe. What does the future hold for young people? And uh, next slide, please. Yes. So the Youth Standing Group, uh, uh, these are a few activities of the Youth Standing Group that I want you to highlight about uh, what we have done. And Marco highlighted about these in his presentation as well. Uh, about the youth standing group role that has taken place, about internet governance submissions. So we created working groups to submit proposals to the IGF. So if anyone who's new to internet governance and who doesn't really know what's going on, and they need uh, some help or understanding about how they can help and how they can participate. So this is something that we try to include and we try to ensure that can be incorporated and we can have the youth members participating. 
So it can be a little intimidating initially if you're a new member. So this is how we try to make sure that you feel welcome and you can get involved. Can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, one other factor that we participated in and that made huge, uh, uh, that received a lot of response was the Global Digital Compact. So the United Nations published the Global Digital Compact and as youth members, we made a detailed submission about what the youth community wants and what can be modified in the Global Digital Compact. It's available on the UN website. So if anyone wants to check it out, it's mostly available. Next slide, please. Uh, yes, this is something that is being launched tomorrow, I am to understand, in person in Japan, because we currently have the board members attending in Japan as well. And this is the Youth Atlas. It's a celebration of youth engagement in internet governance. So that will happen tomorrow. So keep an eye out for that. We're very excited for it. The online version will also be launched tomorrow itself. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, so your future opportunities. Next slide, please. Um, one thing that I want to point I have a, we have a problem with your connection because we don't hear you actually. Can you hear us? Because you just went silent for a moment. One moment. I will try to connect with... Mm. Ah, she's gone? Okay. So while we'll try to establish the connection back to, um, so I uh, will just talk about our youth project because I mentioned it like in the beginning. We, uh, in 2021, when, when it was like first, she was, she's back? Okay, then I will tell this again. Shradha, are you there? Uh, Alina, can you hear me now? Yes, you went out, as I say, I understand you. Yes. Yes, so I can hear you well now. You, you can continue with the, the slide. Yes, this one. Yes, one second. Yes. Um, so one thing that I wanted to highlight was regarding the... Uh, Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you, you, you can. Let's uh, put slides. Uh, Marco will tell us about it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Marco. <laughs> yeah. Because we work closely, so I know what she maybe was intended to tell. Uh, the um, the youth standing group they have two year like uh, two year mandate. So she wanted to tell that the next year is the election of the new board or board mem uh, board yes for uh, internet society youth standing group you need to be first member of the that uh, youth standing group to be um, um, proposed to be uh, uh, like uh, in the no new board so the uh, her idea was that if you want to make changes or if you want to do something uh, for the youths in the internet governance world next year is uh, on the slide is mentioned beginning of the early 2024 there will be open call for elections and for proposals for board so yeah uh join the mailing list join the youth standing group and if you want uh candidate yourself to to the new uh two-year termin termin of uh, board members for youth standing group internet society 
Yes, thank you. And I guess this is was actually the, the yeah the, the QR end. code I guess to to join the um, the Internet Society. Even if you don't have Internet Society chapter in your country, you can uh, make your online account and you will become a member of Internet Society uh, group and youth standing group, of course. Okay, thank you. Uh, so this is, was great Q and A, but I guess. Uh, she hasn't joined us. We'll try to maybe uh, maybe she can answer for online speakers in the chat if you send questions. So maybe she's still there because I think that the problem is that uh, the audio cannot be loaded. Uh, so uh, I started about telling about the project. So in uh, let's begin in 2021 when it was like first use Russian IGF, we established uh, a very I think. Uh, interesting project which is called Youth Digital Ombudsperson. He was elected to this first uh, uh, youth IGF and his idea was to uh, create someone who can tell, uh, uh, who can explain uh, the tech uh, laws to the uh, youth uh, audience. For example, like, uh, and also to enlighten them uh, how to have like a sec secure connection to the web, uh, or if they have problems with, for example, um, uh, uh, some kind of a digital uh, issues that they can uh, go to someone and tell that they have a problem, what should they do, where, where should they go? Like for example, uh, if there are bullets in the web, so how to deal with this, how to deal with the psychological aspects of that problem or with the law uh, uh, thing because there are still laws that can protect you from uh, such things. And uh, he also, uh, it's, uh, he, he's called Dmitry Gulaev, he actually participated in uh, IGF 2021, which was held in Poland, but online. And he told about his project. Now he works mostly with the uh, audience uh, with the high school and middle school audience and try to explain because it's a new generation who uh, grew up when internet was available uh, all the time. Maybe they grew up with a phone in their hand and still they have problems with connecting online with secure, having secure connection. What I mean by secure connection is that like you go to the web and uh, you know that uh, you shouldn't say like, uh, you shouldn't scroll the internet for hours. You should probably have some time without phone in your hand. Uh, that uh, there are some websites that can have uh, malware, that can have uh, like uh, and programs that can bring virus to your computer, uh, etc. And um, he. Uh, uh, actually established his school, which is called like School of Sec uh, Security School for Internet, and uh, he tries to make some kind of course that uh, uh, school children can process and uh, maybe tell their peers about uh, the rules of behavior on the web because it's still important to behave well. Uh, it's not like. <laughs> To uh, not to insult anyone on the web because it's not a good behavior, uh, and uh, I guess that's actually what I tried to say about uh, this project. He's still working, and since then he was alone, and now he has, has a whole team. So maybe maybe someone wants to do something like that in his in their country. So. I guess uh, because we left of the speaker, so maybe if they have, if we have uh, some kind of questions, um, we can answer them. But if someone wants to jump in and say something, uh, please welcome or she. Uh, thank you. So do we have someone to tell something? I guess not. Okay. Uh, so I think that because we're left of speakers and because uh, there have like three speakers didn't join, uh, there's no one, yet, right? Uh, okay, yeah. So I guess we can probably wrap it up. So because we have, uh, uh, yes. Ah, you want want to say something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, take a mic. Thanks. Um, well, while we are we are all here, I would just like to open a conversation and ask if you have any advice. Like, I'm from Canada, and I 
I think we have an internet society uh, back home, but I'm not sure it's very active because I've never heard of it. So I would like to have like maybe advice or a thing that worked particularly well in your own countries or areas to maybe inform our practices. Uh, I would try to answer that one. Yeah, there is an inter society chapter in Canada. I am not much aware how much is active. Uh, but first, I would try to try contact them to see to first to know the people because it's in your country it's more easy to to work. Uh, but also, you can register uh, on the as I mentioned, internet society as a member there. Especially if you are uh, interested in some special groups like the youth, but there's uh, more special groups that are, I don't know cybersecurity special group, gender balance. I think have special groups something like that where you can cooperate. Uh, and I also. Uh, because we are still in the internet governance topic, I also wanted to, to you to check because I think there is also Internet Governance National Forum Canada, which is active. Uh, I can connect you with them because I, I know them. Uh, and to check those kind of things so you can um, yeah, know what is your, in your country and how you can uh, do it online. Uh, I would say to anyone who is barely new to this internet governance and I don't know, maybe they don't have at home uh, those kind of initiatives for someone created, to take a look at the fellowships that are open. For example, Internet Society Youth Ambassador Fellowship is currently open. It opens, uh, opens uh, this week, I think, uh, last week, it was, so it's active. Uh, it's very good. Uh, I'm, I'm not promoting that one, but I want to say that there are a lot of opportunities where it's very good experience where you learn what is internet governance. They learn you how to advocate, maybe how to write a policy. So we, it, will get, it will get you some kind of intro into this world, especially because there are some procedures that need to be followed if you want to get more in, in that level, let's say. Uh, I'm telling this because I am a technical person, so for me this was like, okay, I don't know how policy works, I don't know how advocacy works, but it was very, very good. Uh, and as I mentioned, yeah, contact them, uh, try to do something because there is a lot of um, open space, especially for youth. I mean, it's not that open as we, we want to be, but it, in the year and year that follows, it's more and more engaging. They include the youth more as a topic or as a trend, I don't know, but we will see. But that's our chance where we can get more included and bring what we want to, to try. I don't know if I answered the question, but. Yes, thank you, Mark. Did he answer you? Yeah. yeah. OK, thank you. Because I said that Shrat is also with us again, so we'll try to maybe connect with her. So Shrat, a word to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alina. I'm sorry for the technical issues, but how is it a uh, online call if there are no technical issues after all? Uh, thank you so much, Marco, for continuing and completing the presentation. And uh, this was something that I wanted to touch upon towards the end of my presentation about how you can get involved. And if you have no idea and uh, you don't know where to connect or who to connect to. So uh, start out by reaching to the Youth Standing Group or the Youth Coalition for Internet Governance mailing list. And they're very open, the mailing lists and uh, your interactions with people in the community. So what we can do in such instances is just the question that you asked here, we can put it on the group and for sure you'll be able to get connected to someone who either works in the field or who has experience or who can connect you to the right person in the Canada chapter or on any international event that is happening in the Canada, reg Canada region with uh, youth members involvement. Uh, furthermore, uh, one thing that we've realized has worked particularly well that I wanted to share about the youth members or uh, the youth standing group so involvement and the Generation Connect ITU group also used this was before we start out any project or an idea, we send out a survey asking what exactly is it that the community wants and what exactly is it that the youth need and youth want to prioritize. So we set out a list of priorities, we add an option towards the end that they can add more uh, whatever they wish if there's any addition. But what we realized is that sometimes the list of priorities that we have in mind versus what the entire community has in mind can be different. So one example that I can give you is uh, the International Telecommunication Union set up this call for uh, the Generation Connect youth members and Canada is particularly active in that uh, particular arena. 
And one thing that came up was while we prioritize cybersecurity, while we think that issues of ransomware and all of these issues are extremely important, uh, on par with that, uh, gender equity and intersectionality on the internet was also prioritized by the youth community members, which is why when we had the youth summit in Rwanda and the subsequent plenipotentiary in Romania, both of these issues were brought out and they were particularly highlighted by the community members, by the youth community as a top priority. So this is something that we have realized has worked well for us. So if you can get connected to the chapter, you can get involved with the youth members and you can get uh, initiated into the process of working in internet governance and participating and contributing your ideas. I think this is something that would be really nice to look forward to. Uh, and so maybe also I will ask questions to uh, every speaker, like if a person, for example, is not in the internet governance at all, how can he actually start? And uh, are there any kind of, uh, maybe you can give some advice for a person that wants to, but doesn't know wh wh where to start, like he doesn't have any uh, kind of knowledge of the topic. Maybe everyone can do it. So who, who, who wants to start? I might start later, you can maybe add me more. So uh, as mentioned now, uh, I would say if they are new to this, they don't know, or I don't know, they still don't know what is happening, maybe they don't like it in the end. I would say maybe joining the, um, the, the mailing lists and the working groups uh, to find out, to see how it's going. Also, uh, as we mentioned, we have a Telegram chat group, group chat where we have a channel and uh, share those kind of uh, opportunities, happenings, events. And most of the events, they are uh, available and free. Uh, unfortunately, they are somewhere in the world, but most of like IGF, uh, it's uh, available to join online, just to join them, to see what are discussion, how is the process going, uh, because IGF is, for example, a platform for discussion, so it's not that we're gonna agree here something and that will be implemented, where it's different from, I don't know, ITU events, where they are more, how can I say, intergovernmental. But there are many uh, events, I will mention here also ICANN, uh, which is also more technical, I would say, technical on the policy level, but it's still to see, uh, I would say, if you don't know, try those events. You will find maybe something. You will meet uh, nice people even online. And you will find maybe in the end what you are in which direction you want to go. When you find the which direction, it's more easy than to, I don't know, get involved and engage and contribute what you can do. Uh, and as I mentioned, try to, to apply for the opportunities like fellowships and those kind of things because in there you really learn all those kind of things and how to... Uh, navigate on these events, how to prepare something if you want to, to show or, I don't know, maybe cooperate with others and join them, something like that. I would say those kind of things. Shatka, do you want to add something maybe to Marka's uh, speech? Thank you so much, Alina. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, so Marco was talking about the Internet uh, Society's youth ambassadors, the IGF youth ambassadors. I have just posted the link on the chat here on the Zoom room. So you can check it out. And if you're not on the chat, if you're not in the Zoom and you're attending the call in person, just type Internet Society IGF Youth Ambassadors 2024 and you will see the link. The applications are closing in exactly nine days from today on the 20th of October, so you have plenty of time. Uh, the questions are going to mostly ask you about your passion for internet governance and what exactly drew you to internet governance. So it doesn't have to be a topic that is 100% internet governance related or you think is governance related because most of these topics are intersectional. So environmental sustainability, eco internet report, for example, of Dot Asia that was brought in. So all of these are intersectionalities of you being interested in a different topic and connecting it to internet and making sure that they are furthered by internet. So one example, another example is the SDD, SDG digital agenda that was brought in by the International Telecommunications Union. The report was released last week, I believe. And that report highlights how ICTs and internet governance can actually further any sort of all the SDG goals and how uh, internet can actually take your advocacy and your passion for a particular goal of the SDG forward. So that is something that you can highlight and you can explore and maybe bring in your fresh perspective. And adding on to what Marco was saying about regional groups. So in addition to having national chapters, what we also have is something called as schools of internet governance. 
So the virtual school of internet governance is the easiest one if you do not know where to start and you're confused and you just want to figure out if this is an area of interest that you might like. Start out with the virtual school of internet governance and if something catches your fancy. So we have for the Asia Pacific region, I, uh, there is the Asia Pacific uh, school of internet governance. There is the Asia Pacific regional internet governance forum. So all of these avenues are something where you can build on and start contributing about your experiences, about about what you have understood and what you have experienced and how you can further it and better it. So these are a few avenues and opportunities that you can highlight. And um, above and beyond, the youth standing groups always here to welcome you and to get you involved. So anytime you want, just reach out to us, any of us, all the board members, Veronica, Zhao, all of them are attending the conference in person. So you can find them around in the room somewhere ask Marco where they are, call Marco, ask him how to get involved, how to get added to the mailing list, and he will help you out. And if not, you can always find me somewhere on LinkedIn, on Instagram, anywhere on the internet, and you can always reach out to me and then we'll help you forward in this journey. So thank you so much, Alina, back to you. Thank you, thank you very much. Marco, one else? Yeah, I want to add something that I didn't mention. We talk about internet governance, but internet governance is just one topic. I would say that it's an umbrella of topics. And I believe that anyone, even if you are not tech, if you're not, a, I don't know, law student or something like that, you will find something that you want to, to, to do on this topic or correlate to someone, uh, to some of the topics. So it's a broad term, internet governance, but uh, somehow it might need to be in the name. Yeah, I wanted to say that. Yes, thank you very much. So is there anyone uh, who wants to ask? Uh, yes, please. Hello, my name is uh, Thorsten Krause from the Digital Opportunities Foundation based in Germany. I work um, in the field of uh, child rights and digital environment. And um, in Germany we have uh, several um, kind of councils or possibilities where young people can uh, engage and participate. And they report different experience about their impact. So I would like uh, to ask you, what's your impression about your impact uh, to, to your adult organization, yeah, to the ITU, to IGF, to ICANN, or what else? And w yeah, what's, what's your impression? Do you have an impact? Um, what challenges uh, your faces? And yeah, maybe you can share some insights about that. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I can, I can start. Um, for some of the programs, we, we have, like, uh, how can I say, some reports we are doing. For example, for the ambassadorship uh, that I mentioned from uh, Internet Society, that we are also together with the Youth Standing Group and the Coalition of Internet Governance doing the mentorship. Many of them, when they finish, they are uh, more active or going in the, some of the positions. So I would say it's on a way successful because you have like a mentor, you collaborate with them and they have in the end, uh, I mean, from year to year, they are making the program more serious and uh, the, the selected participants need to do a project to promote uh, those kind of things. As I mentioned, Youth Coalition Intergovernance was one of uh, ideas as a project in the past. So now it's like a coalition in some way, which is uh, approved by IGF. Uh, for the youth IGFs, it depends on the, because anyone can request or can do the, for their country. Uh, but it has the, I would say, impact in raising the voice of the youth. Uh, it's still, I would say, I mean, we are, uh, the youth are very much in involved. You can see that here also in the Internet Governance Forum, we have, I would say, not say plenty session, but there are a lot of session with youth we are organized by them, uh, uh, or in, they are part of the speaking or ar arrangement. Uh, but I think that it's still hard to push to the seniors those kind of things or I don't know just to involve the youth Okay, we have the youth, but what are they doing? Let's give them uh, some kind of engagement of course what they can do and uh, how can they do it? But get uh, more involved them not just to be present because sometimes in the past I felt that we are at the conference because youth need to be at the conference not doing or giving back something um, Yes, and uh, for the other things, I can say that, I don't know, the mailing list and those kind of things uh, in the past, we have, as I mentioned, uh, group chats. It's growing uh, in the members and also in the sharing because there we, we have uh, like a section of events and when uh, every region is doing something, they are sharing, like, guys, we are doing this. If you want to join or we are doing this, especially when we are organizing here for the IGF, it was very good collaboration because anyone was, I need someone from that region who is working in this and immediately someone will find someone and it's in this, in this collaboration. 
uh, but for those kind of things that we have, how can I say, a real situation, we can see the impact is. For some of the things that uh, we don't have the reports or we are not doing, uh, I cannot say some concrete answer if there is impact or no. Uh, but yeah, that's that will be my answer. Yes, thank you, Marka. So, Shratka, maybe you will say some mm, kind of insights you have. Uh, thank you. So, one of the ways that we measure uh, impact at the youth standing group is to understand the amount of participation and how much it has increased over a period of time and whether that has been meaningful participation. So meaningful participation in our context, we define it as contributions where, for example, when Marco told us that it's not a token representation, that youth is not at the table just because they want someone to be represented, because they want our voices to be heard and they want to include them in the presentation. So if something that we've observed in the past is events such as Girls in ICT Days, events such as actions of the Asia Pacific region, such as the Net Mission Academy that was launched to get more youth members involved in internet governance to explain from scratch about what internet governance means. The number of applications, the, number, the amount of interest that has been growing in these fields has been tremendous. The youth standing group, uh, the number of members who are part of the youth standing group started out from 1,200 in 2022, who are active members of the community, who are active members of the SIG, and has reached above 2,500 last we checked, which was a few weeks ago. And this is this incremental increase that we've seen over a period of time is something that we use to measure our impact and to measure the contribution. Furthermore, what we're observing is the nuance of conversation has slowly started to diverge from just bringing youth to the table and making our voices heard to actual contribution to policies and governance issues of the government. So one, for example, is uh, the youth reports and the youth policies. So Asia Pacific region is building a lot of its personal data data protection laws, non-personal data protection laws in recent times. And initially, what used to happen was that the statute would be brought in and it would be implemented and the do's and don'ts and uh, the issues related to the loopholes that are related in those legislations were only figured out later. So now what they're doing is that they're opening for public consultation and because of such community members, we get together, we have people from different stakeholders who participate, bring in their opinion, and then we send a detailed report to such governments, to uh, any legislations that is brought in about what we think is has to be modified in that statute. And those public opinions are taken into account. So this is the sort of contribution that we're looking at at the moment. And for meaningful contribution, what we have uh, seen in terms of the International Telecommunications Union as well, is that youth has been included not as a a party to the conversation who can just pass by. But for the first time ever, for example, youth, uh, young members were allowed to be a part of the plenipotentiary conference, which is a conference exclusively between the ministers and the heads of governments of states across the regions that happens once in four years. But a start of the conversation, again, it's a long way to go because initially this time youth were just observing members and they were not allowed to participate in some of the more uh, in most of the meetings. We were allowed to be in the town hall, but most of the meetings you either had to have a special invite or the government or the representatives from your government had to include you. And this is something that we're uh, trying to make sure that that sort of representation and that participation furthers and becomes more meaningful. And that is something that we're trying to do. So yeah, thank you, Aline. Thank you very much. I think you actually said a lot about uh, youth involvement and how it's impact. But actually, I wanted to say that, uh, for example, I, as a, one of the organizers of NRIs in Youth NRIs, when you do this and people come to you, especially young people, you may be like in your country, in your region. The first thing they know about internet governance is usually from the youth uh, IGF forums. And so when they come, uh, they see the interesting topic, for example, like for time, and then maybe from that moment they will stay in the movement. So basically you took a person from your region and then like a few years later, you meet, meet him like here on uh, Global Asia. So basically, it's one of the good things uh, we do. We bring people from different backgrounds to the uh, to IGF, which can and they can share their opinion on the topic. Maybe some opinions that uh, now we don't have uh, them right now, but in the future we will. So I guess that's all we'll answer the question. Yes. So uh, do we have any questions anymore? 
No? So I guess we can just uh, end it right there. Thank you very much for your participation. I guess it was like a wonderful talk. And we found out like a really, really big amount of information. Uh, Yes, if you want to uh, share some kind of opinions afterwards, of course, we're always welcome. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, bye. So, Marco, we will go with you for now. <laughs> yes. Marco, thank you.